As we head into summertime, what can we expect for the second half of 2024, especially when it comes to real estate investing? Well, I'm Kathy Fetke, one of the co-hosts of Bigger Pockets on the Market presented by Fundrise. And I want to share how I'm planning for the second half of the year. And this is really based on a lot of the interviews that we've done on On the Market with some of the nation's top economists and real estate investors. So let's start with an overall picture summarizing the last, I don't know, four years of crazy. We know that we had a pandemic that just changed everything. And a lot of the numbers that we've seen since then have been skewed because it was like having an earthquake in the economy. And one moment, nobody was working. And then suddenly people were going back to work. And just all of the data is skewed. And it's been hard for economists to interpret, including our own Federal Reserve, the central bank of the U.S that's kind of in charge of uh, stabilizing the economy. And one of the ways they do that, they have the dual mandate of price stability, so keeping inflation in check, but also having job stability, having people working and making sure we stay out of recession. So this is a really tough balancing act because if the economy is too hot, well, that can create inflation. And if the economy slows down too much, well, that can create a recession. It's a balancing act. And the Fed has been trying to land the plane, shall we say, in a very turbulent environment. So that just kind of sums up what we've been dealing with with the last four years. Inflation, of course, accelerated because we had unprecedented stimulus, you know, money being handed out probably for the first time ever to the general public. People who were on unemployment had quite a lot more in unemployment than we've ever seen. We, of course, had the PPP loans, lots of money circulating to the tune of, oh, who knows really, but uh, some say over $7 trillion, which would be the amount that was in circulation in entirety in 2007. So kind of shocking. You have a tidal wave of money coming into the system just in an 18-month period during and after the pandemic. And then at the same time, people not working, so not producing and creating supply that people want. You had all this money circulating, not enough supply. And of course, that drives prices up. That's the definition of inflation. Over the past few years, comparing year-over-year data has been complicated and confusing because you're comparing data to sort of abnormal data, right? And we're starting to move into more normal territory. Here's an example of how things can be skewed. Recent reports show that year-over-year home price has been pretty strong, like 6% growth nationwide. But year-over-year data isn't very reliable because we need to pay attention to what was happening a year ago because we're comparing now to then. And it turns out that in April, May, and June of 2023, we actually had negative home price growth. So when we're comparing sales today with then, it's going to look like things are going really well if it was negative growth a year ago. But in 2023, as we moved into summer and into the fall, we started to see home price growth pick up because as you may recall, we also saw mortgage rates come down a bit last year. So as we move forward in 2024 and we're comparing this year with last year, and because last year in the summer and fall prices were going up, even if things are normal here in the U.S. in 2024, it's going to look like things are slowing down in terms of home price growth. So just keep that in mind. Be careful of headlines. Before real estate, I was in the news business. And trust me, news is a business. They're trying to sell advertising. And how do you get people's attention? You scare them. But the saying was, if it bleeds, it leads because scary headlines attract people. They want to watch your news and then you can sell advertising. Well, fast forward to today, we have hundreds, if not thousands of news outlets trying to get your attention. Back when I was in the news business, there were maybe five or six competitors. So it's gotten worse in terms of those headlines having to be so scary that you'll drop everything you're doing and watch. So again, be careful, get the real data and know that as we go into the second half of the year, it's probably going to look like home price growth is slowing a lot, but that's just because we're comparing to higher numbers. Many economists believe we'll just be going back to a normal price growth of three to four percent. Another headline you're going to see is inventory levels are picking up and they are, but this is good news and needs to be interpreted that way. Now, normally I understand why there'd be some confusion, why it would be scary to see rising inventory in the housing market, because back in 2009, that's what we saw. Lots of housing inventory and of course, home prices crashed. Well, that is not the concern today. 
we are still at half the inventory that would normally be on the market, at least pre-COVID. So any increase in inventory is actually a very positive thing. People need choices. And if they don't have choices and they can't find something they want to buy, they're not going to buy it. And that reduces sales. So let's talk about sales pace. Well, this year we've been on pace for about 4.1 million home sales. That's pretty low, historically speaking. And that has a lot to do with new listing data. That's also really low. In fact, from 2021 to 2024, we had the lowest new listing data in history. And it's kind of obvious why there's so many people that are locked into super low payments, super low rates. If they got up to sell their house and buy another one, they'd be paying double the payment for half the size of the house. So sellers are sitting tight, just waiting for something to happen, for rates to come down. And believe me, when that happens, people will put more homes on the market and more buyers will be flocking into the market as well. Now keep this in mind. Fannie Mae has been really accurate in their forecasting. And right now their forecast for 2024 total home sales is about 4.8 million. So they are expecting that home sales will actually increase. And then they expect in 2025, at least they're predicting, that total sales will be back to 5 million. In fact, they're saying 5.2 million. That could lead to another buying frenzy in the housing market because we have 15 million millennials at first time home buying age. And as I said, about four to 5 million homes sell every year. And we have half the inventory that we would normally have on the market. So as soon as mortgage rates come down, you're going to see more people come in the market. More people are going to be able to afford a home. Not a lot of people, but enough given the lack of inventory out there. And that could drive prices up even further. Now, one of the things to pay attention to when it comes to predicting mortgage rates is predicting where the 10 year treasury yield will be because mortgage rates are really tied to where that 10 year treasury is. When the treasury yield goes up, mortgage rates tend to go up. And when it comes down, mortgage rates tend to come down. And that's because they tend to be similar buyers for those bonds. Now, when investors worldwide are expecting economies to slow down, they seek the safety of bonds. And when you have lots of investors buying bonds, well, governments don't have to pay so much to get buyers, so yields go down. But when there's not a lot of buyers for bonds, then yields go up because they have to attract investors. So if you want to predict interest rates, you've got to predict what investors are going to do. And if investors think that we're going to have a robust economy, then maybe interest rates are going to go up. But if investors are concerned about a slowdown, then they're going to seek the safety of mortgage-backed securities and 10-year treasury bonds, which would mean rates would come down. And what would cause that? Well, keep your eyes on the job market. If we start to see jobless claims increase, you can expect that the economy is really going to slow down and that's when mortgage rates would come down. So far, we're nowhere close. In fact, the latest report showed jobless claims actually reducing, fewer people losing their jobs. But it's good news, maybe not so good news for lower rates. Now, Bank America is forecasting the 10-year treasury to hit four and a quarter percent. It's a bit higher than that now. Well, there's a possibility then that rates would come down a little bit, but not by much. Probably similar to what Fannie Mae is saying, around 7%. And B of A economists are actually forecasting one rate hike in 2024. Interesting when Fannie Mae is expecting two rate cuts. It's amazing how so many super educated economists have such varied opinions. That leaves us as investors to just have to go it on our own and try to figure it out on our own. And the way I see it is simply a supply demand issue. Regardless of rates, regardless of job losses or job gains, what we have is a market with very tight housing supply with super strong demand. Again, 15 million millennials forming households, creating families, wanting a place to live. And we are at a time with record low inventory. Realtor.com came out with a report recently saying that there is a shortage of over 7 million homes, and that's 7 million affordable homes, homes that people can afford to live in. That's not a problem that can be solved easily. But as real estate investors, we are the best ones to get in there and help solve this problem. I know so many of you are rehabbers. You're going to buy properties that a first-time home buyer couldn't buy because a bank 
bank wouldn't finance them. Maybe they're just not in good enough shape. And we can go in as investors and buy those homes, fix them up and put them out on the market as affordable housing. And like me at Real Wealth, we're going in and building more homes, trying to bring on more build to rent supply. So never listen to the headlines that will tell you that real estate investors are the problem. We are the solution and we need to get that information out there. We're the ones that can go out there, buy these homes, fix them up and provide more housing or like I said, bring on new supply. So stay strong out there. Know that what we provide is what is needed. And that's why the Bigger Pockets community just continues to grow. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kathy Fetke, co-host of Bigger Pockets on the Market, presented by Fundrise. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.